as a person who is mysterious. Sigma INFJs were always a source of intrigue. From the way they think to the way they communicate with others. They are compelled to experience these odd experiences in their daily life. Here are some peculiar things that only Sigma INFJs do. Number 10. They engage in mental games covertly. The INFJ Sigma may come across as uncaring or uninterested in talks. However, they are fully focused and intellectually aware. During social encounters, their thoughts scrutinize the verbal and nonverbal cues that individuals use, as they glean knowledge about how they ought to approach things going forward. Sigma INFJs are able to attract others' attention or make friends by matching their moods. This is how they enter a relationship on their terms or accomplish their goals. The problem is that Sigma INFJs are skilled manipulators. They can manipulate people's reactions and impressions by using their intelligence to comprehend and penetrate people's rationale. However, Sigma INFJs employ this skill wisely and in moderation, unlike toxic manipulators. Yes, they are able to manipulate others intellectually. However, that does not imply that they would damage others with this. Number 9. If they are not amused, they do not smile or chuckle. People mistakenly believe that Sigma INFJs are curiously unresponsive and kill delights because they never laugh at jokes. However, Sigma INFJs simply don't put on a happy face. They don't act as though they are in love with something when they aren't. They are honest with their feelings and with who they are. Therefore, if they don't find a joke humorous, they demand phony aloft. They won't put on an act of buying a lie dot if they believe it to be exaggerated or unrealistic. Despite this, Sigma INFJs are nonetheless just as sensitive as all INFJs. They self-regulate, they can only respond to the energies of other people if they choose to. They can react to drama if they choose to, rather than just because they did. However, Sigma INFJs won't become less polite if they don't always react to social interactions in a policing anticipated way. It is wonderful to resist being hypocrites and trying to please everyone. Do some of your peers also dislike you because you're a Sigma INFJ and don't take jokes well? Number 8. They are deeply contemplating. As a person whose goal is to reach peak self-awareness, through times of solitude and meditation, Sigma INFJs experience deep self-discovery. They don't talk about this behavior as much with their friends and family, though. They don't speak as passionately about the benefits this habit has had on their relationships, quality of life, or health. Why? Because they simply love meditation for what it is, without regard to how others might perceive it. Therefore, they have little interest in persuading others to follow suit. They don't care as much about letting others be invested in their well-being as much as they do. People are free to be and do what they like. The best quality of an INFJ is this, to begin with. They won't interrogate others about their routines or their lack of interest in meditation. It's as a result of their awareness of the variations in personal preferences. Sigma INFJs have experienced this inner experience and have become completely absorbed at this point. They'd want to keep it under wraps. It stays ecstatic by performing it and taking pleasure in it without being overly noisy. Number 7. One moment being mute, the next speaking out. One Sigma INFJs have a relaxed approach to social situations and won't try to impress others with their speech. They won't answer in order to keep the conversation from becoming awkward. They can easily remain silent when they have nothing more to say. They can politely decline to respond if they are unsure about the response. They never speak unless they really intend to. They do not always express their concerns, rather, they do so when it is necessary. However, when they have a lot to say, the opposite occurs. This explains how they can be silent one second and take control of the conversation the next. The minds of Sigma INFJs are complex. They gather information by observing, analyzing, and connecting it to a larger picture. 
enabling them to speak more intelligently than everyone else. How does participating in conversations as a silent observer help you as a Sigma INFJ? Number six, they don't need to chat a lot to enjoy one another's company. Sigma INFJs yearn to travel or stroll through picturesque areas while enjoying their preferred tunes. Wait till you understand how much they detest engaging in conversation with anyone when taking in the scenery and fresh air. Only Sigma INFJs cherish their silence and refuse to engage in conversation with others. They won't even try to act interested in the discussion. They don't want to ride with somebody who can't keep their mouth shut for more than five minutes. Therefore, it is the last thing they want to do. Sigma INFJs would prefer it if people would leave them alone so they could enjoy the beautiful scenery and enjoyable music. They won't, however, order anyone to stop talking and let them to relish their seclusion. Instead, they will pick their favored company wisely. They will be quite selective in who they choose to hang out with, so they wouldn't have to constantly be annoyed by other people's noise. Number five. They convey their passionate feelings through art. However, why would Sigma INFJs want to keep this a secret? It's because they don't want other people to understand how deeply they feel dot when they first view their work. They don't want to be judged for how intensely emotional and sexually charged the underlying meanings can be. Rather, they want people to keep to their own interpretations of their artistic production. The meanings behind their creative expressions are something that Sigma INFJs always want to keep private. This is due to the fact that they detest being seen as the eccentric and sensitive ones. They don't want to be perceived as being less relatable and more sophisticated. Because they are first and foremost distinct beings coping with an overwhelming world who also require a place to vent. What other ways do you convey your deepest feelings and thoughts as an INFJ? Number four, they harbor offensive views. Should refrain from starting pointless fights at work or home. Sigma INFJs are circumspect when expressing their divisive beliefs. They decide when and how to communicate. Additionally, they are cautious about who they share these thoughts with in order to avoid offending anyone's feelings of insecurity. But just because they detest conflict. However, Sigma INFJs aren't regretful for having such strong, provocative beliefs about politics, society, religion, and culture. It's the fact that they didn't invent them. Before making these assertions, they make sure they are standing on a solid, legitimate, and stable basis. However, if someone makes them feel the need to speak up, they won't think twice about standing out for what they think in. When necessary, they won't use effort trying to fight the instinct to defend themselves. Number three, they abruptly exit relationships. Most of the time, people won't anticipate a Sigma INFJ's decision to leave. Sigma INFJs won't have to let their feelings or subjective viewpoints cloud their judgment when deciding whether or not to stay because they are patient observers. They don't behave in a way that demands constant compliance in order to find peace of mind in relationships. They are not the kind of people that lecture their spouse on what is appropriate and inappropriate in a relationship. Their only responsibility is to express their emotional requirements to their spouse a few times, then watch how they are met. They see how those around them address their worries without emphasizing them again. Therefore, if they see no improvement in responsiveness and reciprocity, they will choose to quit. If others were inclined to give in, Sigma INFJs think they would have long since done so. Is it truly simple to end relationships suddenly if you're a Sigma INFJ? Number two, they dislike compliments and appreciation. Omega INFJs may respond nicely to compliments that are sincere. However, they don't really require them. While overly flattering remarks tend to make individuals feel inspired or impressed, Sigma INFJs don't since they believe in their ability realistically. They would therefore feel the same whether or not people agreed with them. However, they don't communicate their disinterest in receiving support as loudly as they ought to. 
They do so because they value the individuals who performed it. They are grateful to those who helped them and genuinely cared for them. Just that they would continue to feel happy and confident whether or not they received societal approval. Even if others don't believe in them, they can excel at what they are passionate about. Therefore, compliments from those who saw their efforts wouldn't inflate their egos because they were never dependent on it. Number 1. As long as no one is on their wavelength, they will put off making commitments. For a long time, Sigma INFJs won't mind being single. Although Sigma INFJs are criticized for purposefully avoiding commitments, they are really just getting ready for the right one. In reality, having no differences does not imply being on the same wavelength. Being in tune with one another does not imply flawless compatibility. Rather, it indicates that one does not have to translate one's soul for one's spouse or friend. It implies they won't have to put in any extra effort to communicate their love language to their partner. It's because they adhere to a comparable range of ideas, viewpoints, and realities. They travel the same route and aim for comparable objectives. Till they track down that individual, Sigma INFJs would rather stay by themselves than change who they are in order to fit in. Do you avoid unneeded connections as you wait for the right one as an INFJ Sigma? People won't get why or how Sigma INFJs act in such a manner. But in truth, they are not required to. Sigma INFJs are way they are for a reason and serve that reason adequately. What other peculiar tendencies of yours do you find intriguing? Would you still like to share your motivations for being who you are?